All right, thank you, Alex. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the public involvement meeting for our Pine Haven and Woodhaven sewer project, which is uh, um, going to break ground here in the near future. My name is Carter Lawrence, and along with Alex Doza, I will be uh, acting as the City of Bend project manager for this project. Uh, with us for this presentation, we also have Teresa Finley with the City of Bend, who is the Septic to Sewer project manager, as well as Jeremy Benton with Jaron McKernan Enterprises, who is the project manager for Jaron McKernan, who is the contractor uh, for this project. Um, and with that, we'll we'll get going here. Well, a couple housekeeping notes, uh, just so you guys are aware, this meeting will be recorded and made available uh, for viewing on the project website uh, at the conclusion of this meeting. Uh, we would ask uh, a favor of you that you please uh, keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. And additionally, if possible, please do hold your questions uh, until the end. There is a hand raise feature that you can use that we can sort of use to help uh, facilitate that. Uh, use of your video camera is of course uh, entirely optional. Background, as I'm sure most of you guys are aware, uh, the septic to sewer program is, is a, a program that the city of Bend has been implementing over the past couple of years. The Pine Haven Avenue and Woodhaven East sections were part of the 2022 selection uh, of the septic to sewer conversion program. Um, in this, these two streets um, of the property, 75% of the property owners signed the application. So that really shows us a lot of enthusiasm for, for this uh, construction work. And so we're really excited to, to be working with you guys to, to bring sewer to your properties. Scope and schedule. Um, we've been going through the pre-construction paces over the beginning of this year, and we are planning on beginning mobilization, um, hopefully next week to begin uh, bringing material and equipment on site. The um, end goal of this is we plan to install uh, approximately 1,400 feet of new sewer mains um, down Pine Haven and Woodhaven. And during that process, we will be connecting or, or constructing 16 service laterals that you guys can, will then be able to use to connect your properties to the new sewer main. Uh, this uh process is obviously going to involve uh tearing up good chunks of the road so after the installation we will be uh providing full width pa pavement restoration uh we want to note that this will not include any sort of roadway improvements our plan is to essentially bring back the road conditions to how they are currently um Throughout the con this construction process, there will be traffic control uh, provided by Jaron McKernan on Pine Haven and Wood Haven. And uh, additionally, before they go to uh, construct your uh, personal service laterals, uh, they will give you advance notice by either um, knocking on your door or if you're not home when they knock on your door, they will leave uh, a door hanger informing you that uh, your lateral construction is about to begin. Uh, so yeah, as I said, planning on beginning mobilization, hopefully next week with anticipated uh, finishing of construction on um, honor by June 21st. I will pass it over to Alex, who will talk about traffic control. Thank you. Yeah, so um, with construction comes a little bit of um, 
disturbance. So apologies and thank you in advance for um, your patience through the project um, and traffic control is part of that. So um, we will have partial closures um, on Woodhaven and Pinehaven. It'll be road closed to through traffic. So local access will always be provided to the homeowners. You'll be able to get in your homes and your driveways unless there's a, a circumstance in which we'll communicate well before if your driveway is going to be blocked for some reason for a short period of time. Um, but no through traffic, generally speaking. So um, for, for a couple months, will be a little less convenient. Um, so with that local access, um, garbage, recycle, um, mail should still be in effect. Um, those services should not be interrupted, but um, it's a little bit hit or miss sometimes um, with those service providers accessing through a construction zone. So just please keep in touch. You have our email. It's Pretty intimate project, two streets, 16 houses. We already feel like we know the neighbors, so <clears throat> feel free to reach out um, if you find that any of your services have been interrupted and we can work with either those service providers or work with the contractor and, and try to remedy that. Um, so again, extra notice for any driveways that'll be blocked. Um, you know, the thing that comes to mind is like paving. So if um, if for some reason, you wouldn't be able to drive on that. We would give you definitely advance notice um, and you know have a plan for that so you can still access and go about your day and make some plans in advance. Um, if you do have special needs for access, like um, you know if you're disabled or if you if you need to be closer and you can't park far um, distance um, during a short period of time, please communicate those needs with us as well so we can work around those. Um, and then as part of our routine. Um, we do work with uh, City Bend Emergency Services, um, police fire um, to ensure that local access is still maintained uh, throughout construction. So we've done that and um, the school district as well. So um, nothing should be interrupted. They do have a, a bus that drives through Woodhaven. Um, and so they'll just reroute that. There's no stops impacted. So if you have kids that pick up or drop off at the stop, nothing should change. And we're well aware of kind of pedestrian access through that. Um, and so we'll maintain safe routes um, for, for those passing through um, those two streets. Um, next slide. Um, so public outreach, obviously pretty important. We're holding this meeting here. We also do email updates um, on a regular basis throughout construction. So if you haven't signed up already, um, please go to the website and there's a form you can sign up to receive those updates. Um, that just comes from directly from one of us um, and it's usually just a construction update and um, some photos and you can respond to it. So it's a good way to stay in touch. Um, you can always request an on-site meeting if you have an issue or you have additional questions, just feel free to reach out. Um, another vehicle for outreach is those door hangers, as we mentioned, or mailbox flyers. So um, notifying you before we'll start on your property for your lateral um, and paving, two examples come to mind, and then um, one for the start of construction, which you may have gotten already, or if not, you'll get soon, um, as well as some mailed notifications. A couple of examples, the notice of operational completion, and that's kind of that trigger for the, the project being complete, and then you you can go and, and obtain your permits to connect after um, that's been recorded and, and done. Um, the infrastructure transfer agreement is another example. Um, some of you have already signed that, which is totally fine and great. It, it came up front with the temporary access agreement letter, um, and it's just basically um, a document that transfers the um, ownership and maintenance from the, the portion of the sewer lateral where where we stopped, um, you know, because we constructed it and then we'll give it to you if you can tie onto that and, and construct your sewer and hook up your home and, and then we transfer that essentially to you. So that's just kind of an official <clears throat> um, mechanism. So those are just a few examples of mail documents. Next slide. Um, so private encroachments, um, fancy term, uh, we talk about where the right of way line is and where private property starts. And so a lot of um, a lot of people have um, features that um, I could technically encroach in the right of way. Um, it's the shoulder where, you know, if you will. Um, and so 
one of the first things that since we're installing our lateral through the right of way and we're going to be um, working in the shoulder and stuff that is city owned property. Um, and so one of the things one of the first things we'll do during construction is is stake the, the edge of the right of way line with wooden stakes. Um, and so we'll be able to kind of have a visual of where that line is and whether we have encroachment issues or not. Um, just upon kind of walking around it and see um that many issues but um it's hard to tell without those visual features so um again we'll do that this is this photo is an example of kind of a fence along the shoulder and um you know if it's encroaching which you can see it it probably is because the green stake is where the ideally where the edge of the right away ends and the lateral would terminate um and so in this case we would have either the homeowner remove the fence panel or the contractor can remove it and stockpile it until after construction. But essentially the responsibility would be on the homeowner to reinstall it or to remove um, if you if you didn't want it. Or we can talk about um, you know, those one-off circumstances if um if you want to dispose of it or if you sometimes if it's like a planter, they you want to relocate it and, and that's on you, which is perfectly fine. It just takes a little coordination. Um so there's a few items that the contractor or the city is responsible to replace um, within that right away area. So timbers, also known as railroad ties, um, sod, gravel, and bark mulch. So those items would be replaced if, if they're impacted during construction. <clears throat> the second set of items here, fences, plants, trees, bushes, flowers, pavers, bricks, retaining walls, concrete borders, those items are not replaced. So if you do have something encroaching, we can talk about um, what, how you want to, you know, what you want to do with that. Um, and again, if you don't do anything or if you don't respond, um, then technically that Sun City property, it's an encroachment. The contractor to be able to do their work is going to have to um, remove or dispose or stockpile those items. So again, we'll um, kind of be doing a little walk once once we have a visual on where those boundaries are and if you have any concerns um, or if we have any concerns we can reach out and we'll coordinate discussion discussing that um okay so we've talked about laterals we've talked about laterals all day you've all seen kind of what the snip of the picture shows um we've sent the column a lot map. So we've sent these via mail back in July. Um, and that is kind of an aerial image of your um, personal lot showing where the, the sewer lateral that we're going to install is approximately going to go. And so <clears throat> with that, the hope is that you've worked with the contractor or plumber by now to identify if there's a better location to put that um, just based on kind of how they envision routing on the private side to connect your plumbing, your home to that lateral. So several of you have already worked with us to request a shift and we were, I think we were able to accommodate everyone um, to date. So I don't think I have any pending. Um, please reach out if you think that you might want to move it or are planning to talk to a plumber. Um, and um, since construction is starting, it's it's important that we do this as soon as possible so that we can make any adjustments well before we're kind of starting to dig. Um, obviously, that can get a little tricky and we want to have as much notice as we can. So um, for those of you that I have accommodated um, and we've moved them on the plans, there's still a possibility that in the field, once you see that wooden stake um, in your front yard, it's maybe a little bit off. Um, just purely because if you're trying to shoot a gap or you're trying to get, you know, go in between a gate or somewhere, it's a little hard to tell um, when we're just kind of going back and forth on an aerial view. So those minor adjustments are likely no problem. So um, just work with us to make those changes. Um, once those stakes are there, don't don't move them yourself. Um, please don't remove them and don't move them. Um, we'd like to track all the changes like that so we can make sure our surveyors on the same page as our contractor, as us, um, et cetera. So. Um, hopefully, um, again, as soon as possible, you get those requests in, um, but please no later than the end of the month for those um, moves because we anticipate you know, 
having well being well underway with excavation by that point. So. Next slide. Um, the next few slides are just a couple of photos just for fun to show you. Um, I'm sure you're not no stranger to the construction around town, but um, since this is going to be kind of right in your front yard, um, just you'll see paint on the ground. You've seen it already because I know we've located a lot of stuff out there and there's been some franchise utilities doing some relocation work already out there, but um, that's usually just marking other utilities. Um, that are around so that we know they're there and no, we don't hit them. Um, this middle picture is a survey stake. There's some markers on there that tells the contractor what, what to build and where, what elevations to build at. Um, and then the last photo here is just some erosion control protection. Straw bottle just helps with runoff um, and protection fence it's kind of delineating um, either a construction zone or tree protection. Um, a few other pictures. There's the rock hammer in the top left. You'll see that some. It's a little loud. I won't. <laughs> I don't want to scare you. It is loud, and you should expect noise and dust and vibration. Um, the um, these are obviously photos of other streets, but um, so yours may look a little different. But essentially, you'll see kind of the trench is going to be fenced and protected. Um, and um, there will be access alongside of the work zone where this truck you can see in the picture in the top right is driving. Um, and so the access will be provided. Um, it might be a little you know, tight, but um, just drive slow through the site. Um, and the crews are generally really good at um, you know, working with the neighbors and being good neighbors themselves. And, allowing safe passage um, and helping you through um, if there's big equipment around. Um, the bottom left picture is kind of a big trench and you can see crossings. Those are other utilities suspended um, where we're installing our sewers. So you can see kind of what is under there and how complicated construction can get and why sometimes um, your internet might go out. We do our best um, to not let any of that happen, um, but it is the nature of construction. Sometimes that does happen. And so um, we are generally um, respond pretty quickly responsive on um, getting that, getting those service providers out there to fix that so you're not without um, your services for too long. And then the bottom right is just kind of that gravel road base section when we're getting ready to repave and everything. So you you'll you will be driving on, you know, a road with that's graveled um, during these few months. Next slide. Oh, one more. Um, asphalt machine. So that's what that looks like. Um, and then the last two pictures on the middle and the right there um, are kind of what a uh, service lateral clean out looks like. Um, and so that big PVC kind of three foot marker is just a visual marker. Um, that's typically so a plumber can see it and find it um but the um blue the blue tube is um is the sleeve and that goes over the clean out itself and usually those end up being pretty flush with your um, existing ground at the end so um, it really you shouldn't notice much when it's done <clears throat> And then I will give that to Teresa to talk about um, the program side of things. Right. Thank you, Alex. Um, so some of you may have been familiar with the cost or this table um, when you were seeing the petitions going around at the start of the application process. I do want to note that these fees that are listed here are, are basically examples. Um, our rates can change every July 1st. Um, with that being said, we are aiming to finish this project before July 1st, still in June, um, so that we can take advantage of the, the fees that are established to date. So for those who um, sign up and connect within the two-year notice of completion date, which Alex mentioned before will come to you at the end of the project, um, the the total fee is that ten thousand sixty five. But if you connect before that two year period, whether you signed the petition or you did not sign the petition, you were granted a fifty percent discount, which you'll see in the very first uh, number column there. 
The SDC fees, which are the system development charges, are the same for regardless of the petition signing. Um, I they're five thousand seven ninety two based on your um, the lot there. So you'll pay your connection fee, your system development cost, private cost. Obviously, will vary depending on your lot and what your plumber will have to do. So they're down at the bottom are the breakdowns of kind of where you'll see the permit fees to the city and whether or not you take advantage of the 50% discount. Um, the city does offer a connection waiver program and you're able to apply for that connection discount and that will waive the connection fee completely. So um, if you fall under the 80% income limit for your household, the connection fee will be waived and that will not be collected at the time of permits. However, the other fees are still applicable. Um, we list them on our website, but they're here as well. Craft3 and Neighbor Impact are other entities that have been able to provide either low cost uh, or low interest loans to help facilitate and cover the costs that, that owners will have privately. Um, and they kind of operate, I believe, on the similar um, median income level there. Uh, they have different applications that you can apply for through them but there is um, some sort of financial assistance that we do link on our website. So if you have any questions about these fees, the subject to sewer email is a great place to shoot any questions um, so that we can address those and get you any forms or clarification that you might need on the fees. Next slide. Um, so the steps to connect, this is usually sent with the notice of completion, I believe, and via email. Um, so yes, the city will complete the construction and we will issue the notice of completion. That notice of completion will give you your expiration date. So if you've signed the petition, you will have a requirement to connect by that date. If you did not sign, your letter will tell you that your discount is valid until that date. Um, once you receive that letter, you will work with Deschutes County to obtain a tank abandonment permit. You will need that permit number to apply for the city's permits. And you will be applying for a plumbing permit um, and then a new septic or new sewer hookup fee. Um, and then there will be the system development charges, your connection fee and the plumbing permit that you will pay at that time. Um, and then you'll work with your proper, your contractor to connect. And we do highly recommend that um, you as a homeowner do keep track of all of the inspections and where you are you are in the permit process so that those final inspections can be called in and then uh, your, your project or your property is then completed and connected to sewer without any repercussions. And then this here is the list of resources. So we would ask that if you have any specific project questions that you work with Carter um, and you visit the Pine Haven Woodhaven Sewer Project, um, he will be your contact for any uh, technical or construction based um, questions. But if you have any questions regarding the program itself and the steps to connect what might be needed or any of the financial assistance, um, you can reach out to the subject to sewer program and I will be able to help you assist. Community development is also linked here. They are gonna be the ones that you will work with for your, your permitting um, through the city. So, so we will be handling the construction of the project, but when you go to start connecting and pulling your permits, you'll work with our community development department um, to apply for all of those and get that payment. And then Deschutes County, you'll work with to obtain any tank abandonment permits, and they'll have their, their inspections as well to make sure that all of that has followed through. So we've linked their information here as well. Alrighty, um, that's, that's sort of the extent of our presentation. We'd like to take this time to open up the floor and answer any questions that you guys might have for either city staff or for the contractor. Steve. Yes, Steve. Yeah, thanks. Can, can you kind of walk through how the project is sequenced or 
kind of what's what are the stages and and are you going to start what street are you going to start on or has that been determined yet could you just walk through kind of what we will see and kind of how how everything plays out i mean just the reader's digest version of mm -hmm. course but yeah thanks. jeremy if if you're on i can let you answer this i know what we've talked about but coming from the horse's mouth might be best yeah uh so obviously the the first the first order is going to be putting the mainline sewer in so there's going to be a you know couple hundred feet a day kind of going and we're planning on starting on uh, pine haven first and probably you know starting on the pettigrew side and working towards the west is kind of what we're thinking and then shortly after we get you know a few hundred feet of that main line in we'll probably have a crew jump back and and put in you know start putting in services and then once all you know obviously we'll have to stop for manholes and those take some time and then you know once once all the main lines in and all the laterals are in um and everything's tested then it's then it's basically peeling up all the old asphalt and rebuilding your guys's road i know that sounds kind of simple there's a lot of moving parts in there but uh um hopefully we can you know make it go smoothly for everybody and uh you know get everyone in and out and i don't know if that yeah and we're gonna there's gonna be a big saw going down uh so we're you know hopefully that kind of eliminates you know the hammering there's gonna be a big saw that's gonna trench it for us so um that's kind of that's kind of in a nutshell what what the construction is going to be That answer that, Steve, for you. Yeah, that was helpful. Thanks so much. Jason, yes. Hey, just curious if you had an estimated time on when the paving starts i'm looking at having a a second water supply line added and my understanding is um if that supply line is under the the current pavement if i get that done before you guys pave then i don't have to redo that myself if that makes sense what street do you live on on pine haven again i'll ask jeremy but yeah you'll want to coordinate all that as well with us yeah, or I think our schedule kind of has us targeting paving uh, right at the end of May, beginning of June. Um, I think the schedule is kind of right on the 29th of May for paving. Um, that's obviously, you know, that can probably move within a week or so, but that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Obviously, construction kind of um, kind of changes as we deal with with stuff that comes up, but that's kind of what we're hoping for at this point. Okay, and, and so, Jason, if you don't mind just circling back and kind of just coordinating some of that with us as you know more, um, just that way we uh, make sure that nobody's in conflict, they're working in the same area, um, and, you know, um, when we do, like, prep the base for the road, like, we don't, we don't want to have all that prep done, even though we haven't paved yet, and then somebody else comes in and tears that out, and we have to come and prep it again type of thing, so we'll just work together. Yeah, understood. Thanks. Any other questions? Well, we look forward to a good project. Um, and we thank everybody for joining us on an evening here. So um, you know how to get in touch with us if you need. Um, but otherwise, enjoy your evening. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah, thanks for putting this on for us. Oh, we got one, one final, on. final question here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lynn? go 
so I don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you for having the meeting. It's good to see a face with some of the names that I've been exchanging email with and uh, it seems pretty straightforward. You know, for anybody taking walks or riding their bike in the general neighborhood, we can see what that looks like uh, in other nearby places. So it'll be nice to have this done and uh, thanks for all your guidance and uh, help. Thanks. Lynn. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Lynn. With that, uh, I think that we can consider this this meeting adjourned. Thank you guys again for for joining us. And as as questions or concerns arise, please don't hesitate to be in touch. Good night. Thank you. Thanks a lot.